Welcome back to a special edition of Think Tech. Uh, here we're talking about uh, Think Tech Asia this morning, the 11 o'clock block, with a very important and distinct, distinguished person, and that is Jun Soo Jun. He's a professor at uh, Sogang University in South Korea. Welcome to the show, Dr. John. Thank you for having me. Great to have you. You're an expert in maritime affairs, uh, and uh, you are an emeritus professor at Sogang. You're a chair uh, of the Korean Maritime University in Korea. Um, you're uh, the executive vice president of Sogang University. You have been. You've been involved in policy making as uh, an advisor to various Korean government agencies, including the Ministry of Maritime Affairs, that's big, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, that's big, and the Federation of Korean Industrialists. So you are the intersection of where the industry meets the government. Yes, correct. <laughs> and you're an economist. You're chairman of the commissioners of Busan Port Authority, and you're a chief advisor. You have been chief advisor to the Ministry of Maritime Affairs. Um, you have been the chairman of the Restructuring Shipbuilding and Shipping Industries Advisory Committee uh, at the Korea Export-Import Bank. I want to talk to you about that. <laughs> and currently, you're a board member of the Hyundai Shipping, uh, of Hyundai Shipping as a company, and a senior advisor to the Ministry, Ministry of Maritime Affairs. Um, <clears throat> just a couple more. You're the chairman of the advisory committee of the Korea Maritime Institute, and you're a board member of the Federation of Korea Ocean Organizations. And you have done extensive research, uh, numerous publications. Um, your specialty is international logistics, shipping management, port management, and international trade. What did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your good introduction, I see. I still have many caps. <laughs> okay, it I still makes that, me yeah. very busy. Yeah, well, you're a hard worker, and you've had a lifetime of distinguished service to Korea and the Korean shipping industry. And it's very important that we talk to you, because in Korea, shipping is a very important affair. Yes. You're an industrial nation. You, you produce uh, every kind of industrial product and well, and your products are world competitive. So you have got to ship them out of Korea and to the rest of the yes, world. Correct. It's a critical feature, you know, in the way Korea works right now. Yes. And, of course, its economy. So, <clears throat> there's been a problem, yeah, uh, with container shipping uh, out of South Korea. What is the problem? Well, in fact, you see, not particularly in Korea, the world shipping industry in great difficulty now. Traditionally, the shipping industry has maintained steady trend of boom and recession. And as economy changes, However, since the financial crisis in 2009, yeah, 2009, Nine, yeah. and shipping industry has been declining, still they are in difficulty. Why is that? Well, there's a mix the reasons, you see. One is overtonating. Because right after the financial crisis, and one particular shipping company, the biggest guy in the shipping industry, called Musk Line the Danish shipping line, and they introduced the mega ships, large sized container vessels. Of course, they have their reason and logics why they introduced such mega vessels. Used to be less than the one 10,000 TEU. TEU means the box size, mm -hmm. the typical box size. And 10,000 TEU, less than 10,000 TEU, Vessel war normal at that time. But Musk introduced 18,000 TU vessels. Almost twice as big. Yes. Because the logic behind this one is they, they can lower the cost per unit. Sure. Economies of scale. Yeah, yes. It's uh, less fuel cost and environmental friendly vessels. Yeah. And the efficiency is greater than any other vessels exist in that time. Well, is bigger than any Korean uh, shipping line. Oh, yes, definitely. <clears throat> so uh, is, uh, is, is Korea trying to catch up? Are you trying to build 18,000 uh, 18, well, uh, units? Yes, yeah, that's a good, good point, you see. Uh, before we did any action, all the big shipping lines followed the steps. So everyone introduced the bigger mega vessels. Yeah, yeah. So suddenly overturned. So Korea is concerned, and still we were in great difficulty financially. So Hanjin Shipping, that time the biggest shipping line in Korea, they went bankrupt. Hyundai. 
Hyundai. But Hyundai the same survived. Company that makes the cars. Yes. It's a, it's a mega, mega company. Oh, company. a mega company. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's separated from the Hyundai group because of financial crisis and lots of government money put into that to, to rescue the Hyundai shipping. Yeah. That is the reason they are separate from the group and they are more like government company nowadays, you ah. see? Well, it's a, it's a, you know, we have to point out that shipping is critical to the national economy. It's right. Shipping That's is right. a strategic industry. That's right. Without shipping, you know, the economy would fall apart in any country. Um, and so it's really important that the government uh, be involved yes. with Hyundai shipping and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and help shipping in general in Korea. Yeah. Yes. They, as a result, because this is the Hyundai is the only company we have at the moment, you see. And the, as you mentioned, strategically important. So government puts lots of money, taxpayers' money, in fact, you see. Yeah. And we are building new ship, mega vessels, and the biggest the container vessel, and two, yes, 2,400, uh, no, no, 24,000 TU vessels, and the 20 vessels that's, okay, at that's, once, you see. That's bigger than Maersk. Oh, yes. That's the point, you see. Yeah. Bigger means lower cost per yeah, unit. Yeah, yeah. So but we are building 12, 24,000 the units TU vessels, and furthermore, eight more, uh, 14,000 the TU vessels. That size is they can pass the newly expanded Panama canals. So ah, they, they can serve east coast of America. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. So in both ways, we are rebuilding our national mm, fleet. Mm. So uh, where you, I want to stop for a moment and talk about uh -huh. shipbuilding and, for that matter, container building. Uh, is that in Busan? Is that where it's done? Because Korean shipbuilding is known around the world. Yes. And uh, on, on our program, we have many times talked about the Jones Act, uh -huh. and the Jones Act requires a ship to be built in the U.S. Uh -huh. uh, to qualify for the intercoastal trade. Yes. Um, and the, the big competitor... Uh, which, which you can buy a ship, you can build mm -hmm. a ship for half uh, of what it costs yes, in, in New Orleans. Like mm -hmm. you, can, you can do it in uh, mm -hmm. Korea. Um, so Korea is a big competitor for American shipbuilding, mm -hmm. and the Jones Act really stops that and, and makes it an unfair, mm -hmm. uh, not, a, not an even playing field. So the, the question is, how is Korean shipbuilding doing? It is probably the best, most efficient, most competitive shipping industry in the mm -hmm. world. How's it doing? Well, as the shipping industry is declining, obviously, it gives great impact on shipbuilding industry as well, you see. There's no demand, you see. Mm. And, uh, but fortunately, they could get their business from the offshore industry. Huh? And because oil prices hiked off, and they, they needed new source of the, the oil. That's the reason they heavily invested in the ocean. With tankers. Yes. And uh, for that reason, and the shipbuilding industry could sustain to some extent. But nowadays, some say uh, since three or four years ago, they have been in great difficulty as well. But as, you, as I mentioned, Korean government is sub yeah, supporting the shipping industry. And they, subsequently, the demand can be created for the shipbuilding industry. Mm, mm. Based on that, and now because of the later, I'm going to mention about new change of environment because of the new regulation imposed by IMO, International Maritime Organization, that's the on UN fuel. Agency, United Nations Agency. This is on fuel. Uh, no, no, everything. Everything okay. in shipping, in shipping and and port, etc. I think, on, on ocean matters. And uh, they are going to introduce new regulation and the limiting the emission of the, the gas yeah. from the ships. Yeah, so, the carbon. From, yeah, so from, you have to use a yes. high, high quality uh, sulfur oil. That's yeah. right, low sulfur low oil, for, low yes, sulfur oil. the yeah. fuel. So it's uh, compulsory from next year. And then, good thing, is, good point is, old and obsolete vessels, they cannot survive because they have to buy expensive low-fuel oil or they have to retro retrofitting 
scrubber that's on board facility to purify the the bunker. Huge cost. And yes. they cannot pass well, the cost on that's right. to the shippers who are shipping with them. So those old vessels, yeah. they have they are destined to be phased out with the market. And then new balance can be reached between supply and demand. Yeah. And shipping industry can survive, you see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very important, very important uh, for Korea. Yes. Probably important for other countries too that do a lot of shipping with these new regulations. Now, we have the tariffs, mm -hmm. um, President Trump's tariffs. Yes. And they affect, um, I guess they affect Korea in part, but they mostly affect China. And I wonder how they affect Korean shipping. Because if you have less mm -hmm. trade because of higher tariffs, there's less business for Korean shipping, yeah. no? The funny thing is, because of that, the risk, and they all of a sudden, from the last quarter of the last quarter of last year, there's a sudden surge of the trade volume huh? because they want to ship out before <laughs> <laughs> the custom tax increase. They say pushback. So <laughs> nowadays it's a booming period. It's very sudden. interesting. A reverse twist. <laughs> yes, that's right. Nobody knows. They say what happens. I also wanted to ask you about the South China Sea, uh -huh. not not because you're directly involved in geopolitics, you're an economist, but um, you know, if the South China Sea is more constrained by China, and I expect it will be, there's very little the U.S. can do to stop mm -hmm. that. And very, right. very little the U.S. is doing to stop mm -hmm. that. So now the, the Chinese are going to um, have control. And they're going to constrain. Who knows yeah. what they're going to do mm -hmm. with all the traffic that passes through the South China Sea, yes. which is tons and tons and tons That's of traffic right. going mm -hmm. everywhere. It is a major sea lane. So the question is, how does that affect Korean shipping? It's just south, right? along west of Japan, just south, mm -hmm. how is it going to affect Korean shipping? Well, obviously, we expect a great impact thing if anything goes wrong in that particular area. Because in the Korea nowadays, our trade volume in terms of money, the exceeding $1 trillion, you say, in and out. Hmm? But we are, Korea is virtually an island because still, north to the north, there's the hostile North Korea still yeah. existing, yeah. we are trying to uh, the persuade them to come to the you see, yeah. risk on some peace agreement anyway. But yeah. the U.S. is playing a great role nowadays, you see, to yeah. make it possible. Well, we'll but anyway, see. yeah. <laughs> so that trade route, everything goes to the European countries. Is that right? Yes. You take them on Korean ships uh -huh. all the way to Europe through yes. the, the, the Panama Canal That's with this right. new equipment. Okay. And all the resources like oil mm -hmm. and iron ore, etc., they all go through that channel, you see. So it's extremely important. What I get is that Korea is an industrial nation uh -huh. uh, producing, manufacturing many things. Yes. However, Korean shipping doesn't necessarily rely on shipping industrial products from mm -hmm. Korea to the world. Mm -hmm. It's also shipping resources and products from country A to mm -hmm. country B, which had nothing to do with Korea. It's yeah. just that Korea has a very good shipping industry. Am yes. I right about that? That's right. Yes. Especially, say, a liner container business concerned, the Korean car originated from Korea is only 19%. And the other close to 80%, over 80%, we are, through the crossing trade, we transport yeah. other countries, the, the cargoes. Yeah. And mm, also our trading company, they are very active and they are very strong, traditionally. So they are doing their good, good jobs, you see. Hyundai Shipping would be a trading company? Uh, we have affiliated. Affiliated company. with yeah. a trading company. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's, it's, an Asian, it's an Asian model, isn't it? Trading companies oh, like yeah. out of Hong Kong and uh -huh. all that do everything with everybody everywhere. Yes. So, um, what you know? What about your primary uh, trade and shipping partners? I mean, for example, are you doing any trade at all with mm. North Korea? Any trade? Yes, uh, that's the by law. You say we are not supposed to do any trading. Uh, yet. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So nothing. But if there is a peace agreement, uh -huh. if there's a denouement. Uh, with uh, North Korea, then then you will have trade, am I right? Oh, yeah, definitely, yes. And what kind of trade would that be? You'd be delivering manufactured goods from South Korea to North Korea. Well, in the, in the North, there are abundant raw resources, you see, minerals, etc., and very well-skilled and good prospect cheap laborers there. Huh? So we have technology, we have money, 
And if we combine together, we may create some idealistic model of yeah. new economic development. Yeah, so this is actually when, when people think of the possibility of reunification, uh -huh. they think of it as a, as a land reunification uh -huh. and a people reunification. But uh -huh. actually, shipping would be commerce, trade that's right. would be a uh -huh. big part of reunification. Yeah, yeah, that's right, they think. Also, the, we are the planning to build up the, the ports there, including container terminals in the north, you see, in the near future, if everything goes all right. You see. And then, obviously, that the ports and container terminals we are planning to build, and including our current strong the Korean fleet, may make great contribution to development of economy in North Korea. And you, Dr. John, would be directly involved in that, wouldn't you? You are the perfect person <laughs> to be in, in that whole effort. History is waiting for you, Dr. Thank John. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, we take a short break. and yes. we come back, I'd like to go through your slides, oh, show yes. a few pictures. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to ask you about one very important thing you've been involved in, namely the ports of Korea mm -hmm. and, how, and the, how the infrastructure works and how you build efficient mm -hmm and um, you know serviceable infrastructure in all those ports yes not only busan but everywhere mm -hmm. we'll be right back after this oh, short yes. break thank you aloha and mabuhai my name is emmy ortega anderson inviting you to join us every tuesday here on pinoy power hawaii with think tech hawaii we come to your home at 12 noon every tuesday we invite you to uh, listen watch uh, for our mission of empowerment, we aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're gonna learn a lot. You're gonna come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at three o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Okay, we're here with uh, Dr. Junsu John, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm not going to repeat his credentials because that would take too long. <laughs> but suffice to say, he's a leading uh, expert um, in, in academia and in government uh, and in industry in Korea on maritime affairs and shipping. And we have a short slideshow to bring this alive to you, so let's show some pictures. And Dr. John, would you, would you describe yes. what's there? This one is the container vessels. That one is a conventional one, rod, but it has on both gears, crane, to, for discharging and loading. And so they can serve those ports. Not, they don't have specialized container terminals. But, yes. Okay, let's see the next one. This is typical container terminal. And uh, everything is nowadays the fully Auto, automa, automation as introduced, mm -hmm. and this one is the semi-automation. The those are, those here. cranes are state of the art. Yes. Yeah. And what port is that? That one is Busan port. Busan port. Yes. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Ah. This is the hinterland. There are also warehouses and container depots, and the container yard, etc. There's actual activities. Uh, handling containers take place. Mm -hmm. And we're looking now, this picture shows you the port. Yes. This is not the surrounding neighborhood. Those are all port facilities. Yeah, all we're port looking. facilities. It's huge. Yeah, of course it's a... <laughs> well, I'm excited for that. Okay, let's go to the next one. What's this that? This one is the bulk ships. Huh? And they use the iron ore or the coals, etc. I see. How, how many feet is that? That one's usually they can load uh, 300,000 tons of the iron ore or coal, something like that, you see. Is that a relatively new ship? Yes, brand new ship, I brand think. Brand new ship? Yes. My mm -hmm. goodness gracious. And that's all oceans, all seas? Yeah, all everywhere. seas. Everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Okay. Yes. All right, next. 
This one is the you remember still the early 1980s, the Exxon Valdez tragedy took place and they contaminated the whole coastline of Alaska and the northern part of California. And since then, you see, new law implemented and strongly regulated. All ships should be built double hull. Yes, so, of course. So one skin actually torn off, still inside another skin remain. Ah. So it prevents the oil spillage. Yes. So it's compulsory nowadays. Every tanker have two, two, two tiers, yeah, two, two layers of the... Two layers, yeah. yes. So this is, that's a section of ship we're looking that's at right. at the right. Yes. That is huge. That must be, what, yeah. uh, hundreds of feet from the top to the bottom. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. You. And, and, and you are able to, in a big shipyard, you're able to move that around and insert it into mm -hmm. the center of a ship. Yes. So shipbuilding is such a big deal. That's it's complicated, right. it's expensive, uh -huh. but it has enormous rewards for the owners, hopefully, uh -huh. for the country, um, and for geopolitical purposes, it's, it's very important to any country. And you have been able to achieve a shipbuilding industry, which is really excellent. So when did that start? Were you involved in the development of the shipbuilding industry in Korea, Dr. John? Not that early, <laughs> but <laughs> later on. But anyways, when they started it, and if you visit Daewoo, the shipbuilding yard, and they employ more than... 60,000 people. 60,000. They have university, two universities Just in there. Just the shipbuilding. Yeah, universities and high schools and the elementary school for their, the kids of employee and huge the that's, complexes. That's fabulous because that teaches generations to come. That's right. And it ensures the, pri mm. the primacy of the industry. Uh, does Korea also build uh, cruise ships? I know these are industrial ships, cargo ships. Cruise that ship, yeah. yet, you see still monopolized by European shipbuilders, you see. Uh -huh. And they, there's strong uh, barriers. To Regulatory it. barriers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, not yet, you see. Yeah. Hmm? Not yet. But that doesn't mean that uh, European cruise ships don't visit ports in Korea. They, <laughs> they visit they the ports come. of Korea. <laughs> they, yeah, of course they, they come do, these yeah. days, yes. It's a great destination. Uh -huh. Let's go to the next picture. Uh -huh. This one is an interesting one. This is pure car carrier. And they are transporting cars, you ah. see, and from Japan and Korean Korea. Cars. Yes, Korean cars. Yes, <laughs> mainly Korean cars. But I can give you a very interesting story. Yes. In old days, yes. 1970s, 1980s, that time, China was less industrialized. And obviously, they imported many cars, especially from Germany. Eh? And Mercedes Benz for sure. their VIPs, etc. Sure. Yeah. But whenever they discharged those vehicles at the Chinese ports, they have to use the Chinese labels. And that time, the 1970s, 98, not many good drivers in China, I see. And, and obviously, so-called self-claimed driver, they were yeah. employed for that. Sure. So the damage ratio, whenever they, those cars were discharged, two digits, you see. So they had to return those damaged cars to Germany again. It cost a lot, you see. <laughs> and the company named Nozak, the Norwegian company, and when they transported the cars to Chinese port, yeah. when they discharged, rather than using the Chinese drivers, they invited all Chinese drivers to their vessels, saloon and cafeteria, entertain them with good German beers and show them good attractive videos, you see. <laughs> mm? And from the saloon boy to the captain, they drove the cars out, you yeah, see. Yeah. They received special training on, in their DNA, yeah. their driving yeah, in yeah, DNA yeah. there. <laughs> right. So the damage ratio down to lower than a one point, one percent. Mm? So, Chinese government was so delighted to, <laughs> and they awarded them exclusive right to oh transport no. all vickers. Oh no. So once the NOSAC had more than 50% of the market share in the transporting cars, hmm? uh -huh. that's their success story. <laughs> so whenever I give this, this story to my students, I told them, whenever you are in difficulty, don't be frustrated. One step backwards, and look at the thing from different angle. 
and then you can find the solution. There's always an opportunity. Yes, <laughs> there's always opportunity, yes. I think that was our last slide. So, oh, we got one more. Let's look at uh -huh. one more slide. Ah, yes, ah, that's ports, my favorite yes. slide. <laughs> so these are the ports of North Korea, South Korea. Yes. And uh, you can see that uh, they, they are on both sides, uh -huh. both east and west coasts. Um, and they run right up to the DMZ, actually, yeah. pretty close uh -huh. to the DMZ. Yes. Um, and, of course, uh -huh. as you mentioned, uh, Busan is on the s southern tip, yes. which gives it access to all of Asia, uh -huh. Southeast Asia, Australia, and so forth. So this, this array of ports is, it makes Korea equipped to trade with everyone everywhere, yeah? Uh -huh. and they're all, are they all big ports or are some of them smaller? Yes, Busan is the biggest one. Yeah. In fact, there's the fifth largest port in the world. See? Yeah. Very active and very busy. And because of that, the other ports less active. But of course, it's the, usually now the, the provincial government, they are strongly encouraging yeah. their local port to yeah. be more yeah. hmm, active. So, for instance, Kwangyang, that's the, On the west, left, side. Yeah, west side, yeah. and Incheon. Port. That's on the, the west yeah, side. Yeah, getting. Incheon is near the DMZ. Yes, yeah. exactly. So if the and if things goes well with North Korea, and Incheon will be the another active port. You oh, see? Yes, oh. yes, They'll take yes. The best advantage of that. That would, that would be that would be fantastic. Yeah, that would be yeah. made to order, all ready to go. That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's How about on the east side? Is there a big port like that on the east side? Because I I I have experience with mm -hmm. one case where an American ship. Uh, uh, went into the rocks on uh -huh. the east side of, of Korea because the oceans and the shoreline, dangerous. The rocks, the currents uh -huh. and all that, dangerous. Is it easier to transit on the west side than the east side? Uh, is the coastline dangerous as, as, as I Not experience? dangerous coastline. The east, the east coast is much deep draft, you see. Mm -hmm. So any port has... Or deep draft on yeah. the east side. Suction draft. Yeah. No problem there. Yeah. Yeah. But the, because the steel... And so far, the, those the transfer, transshipment containers at the, the Uladivostok. Uladivostok is that's the Russian port. Yeah, Vladivostok. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's the one. And from there, there's the Trans-Siberian Railroad. They transport the container. So Korea has its own one belt, one road arrangement, huh? You can, you <laughs> yes, can cross sort of, all yeah. of Russia from the right. right mm -hmm. west. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about ports and what we can learn. I mean, you've been building ports, managing ports, mm -hmm. supervising ports and carriers for many years. And, and um, you know how it has been so successful in mm -hmm. Korea. And there must be lessons that you can share with us. Because we're in a kind of geo political position in Hawaii, we're halfway through, and we have a certain limited co consumer market, uh, but, um, you know, we have one big port here on, on, in Honolulu, maybe some smaller ones mm -hmm. elsewhere, but what is your perception of, of how we are doing in terms of developing our ports, or what can we do better to develop our ports to attract international shipping? Well, in fact, now the new trend is the, and so far, and the port itself has got a power to, but they never materialize to exercise. And if they, they just drag it by shipping industry, whatever the shipping industry does, they just follow. But that's wrong, you see. For instance, you see, the ship is getting bigger and bigger, and the ports are forced to accommodate. Ah, so it's not a good fit. Yeah, they invest lots of money to build up, yeah. expand for the expansion of the port. and. Uh, we build the intent land structure to accommodate such a the large volume in one short period. Yeah. And that's not the thing. So now the new trend is post get together. And we need to have collective voice to reflect our interest rather than. Hmm? So we should be more proactive about the change of shipping industry. We must give some influence on their change, something like that. And on the other side and post side, we call smart port. What is that? That's the new technology introduced into the port. The port is very traditional and very conservative industry. So they don't change much, you see. But now, proactively, we must accommodate a new technology. And you must create value added and should pass on to the customers, the shippers. And we must attract the shippers to our port 
But in Hawaii, you don't have, you don't have that kind of competition locally. However, new trend is new technology should be introduced into the port management and then they expedite the transfer of the cargoes, containers, and how to create a value added and pass on to our customers, to our shippers. That's the main concern nowadays sure. into the port. Sure, right? so it's a market That's and you right. have to attract your customers. Everything, people, they take it for granted, you see? Right. Yes, it's Some wrong. Complacency. Yes. Yeah. They must change. So uh, one question underlying that is Hawaii, you know, we keep on hearing Hawaii is a relatively small economy, mm -hmm. relatively small port. Um, and these big ships can easily mm, fly over Hawaii, bypass Hawaii, not, mm -hmm. not need to come here. How can Hawaii make itself relevant in these international routes? Well, it's, there's good point and bad point. Bad point, it will pollute. Hmm? Contamination is here from the ships. Yeah. But now, anyway, that now from now on, even the IMO is planned to implement new environmental regulation. Yes. Until 2050, CO, even CO2 emissions should be halved. Huh? So, more environmental friendly shipping industry will be realized. So. It's good idea is now how to create value added huh? in Hawaii. Once you import foreign products and put some cosmetic things and then create value added, you see? Assembly. Yes, assembly. Assembly, yes. assembly of products and, uh, and components from That's right. shipped in mm -hmm. elsewhere. Yeah. And then we ship them again back That's to right. the mainland uh -huh. or somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, we could do that. It'd be a whole new economy, wouldn't it? Yes. Because we don't do it now, but it could happen. So if I gave you 10 billion American dollars, Dr. John, would that be enough to upgrade our ports and our technology? Do you think that would work? I think $10 billion is sufficient for how I business a relatively small port. Yeah. And so I think, see, that's a good idea, you think? Yeah. But about, I don't think you would give me. <laughs> $5 billion work? Yeah, I think five billion is a lot of money. So. Well, five billion is less than eight billion we just spent on the wall. <laughs> so, <laughs> seems like this yes. is more important. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. John. Right. Thank great you for to talk having to you. Me. Jin Sung John, great to have you here. Thank you very much. Aloha. Right.